Without innovation, we would not be able to renew our economies. Uh, and we need innovation so that our civilization as such can continue to grow and does not stall out. We don't want to go the way of the Romans, for instance. Um, in this, uh, you know, wars between countries, uh, competition between uh, companies, even individual effort, all of that is just basically uh, details in a big picture of innovation. New markets come about, uh, new technologies provide new platforms for people to uh, create startups and companies. Uh, we have new people, new geographies that we could go into as well. Uh, there's a, a whole opportunity for entrepreneurs to start new companies, or even just to become innovators in large, large established companies as well. All of this uh, creates uh, patterns for companies to innovate, uh, such as uh, disruptive innovation for startups who uh, disrupt the large established companies, or in the case of new markets or new, uh, new countries, uh, frugal innovation or reverse innovation, origins of innovation that are basically brought about by uh, new markets that, uh, that are now part of the global competition. Nowadays, pretty much every innovation has global roots. Uh, I would say in a strict sense, a global innovation is an innovation uh, that takes place concurrently in uh, several different countries and several continents. Um, they need to be connected somewhat. There needs to be a simultaneousness to it. Otherwise, uh, there would be too much of a distance between inventions that have been taking place many, many years ago, and that is not really a flow of innovation. It's really important to see that these countries, these uh, innovators are connected across uh, long distances in order to be global. There is more global competition, uh, which is uh, at the face of it, obviously a threat to many countries and many companies, but there's also more global opportunities, more global entrepreneurship as well. There's no way how we can block global competition. Uh, however, I think with uh, global uh, technologies and global innovation, we can leverage what is happening uh, internationally, uh, even from small countries like Lithuania, and we will be able to uh, become more competitive globally. For instance, China is a uh, good example of what is happening in terms of global innovation. China used to be a country which was not very technologically advanced, so there was a lot of technology inflow into China. Uh, the Chinese have been very quick and very capable at adopting these technologies to create local markets and in the meantime are becoming global innovators themselves. India, another example, they are already global innovators but for reasons that are to some extent beyond the control of uh, the Indians. The Indian market is not yet a global market, so they're still lagging behind somewhat in this context. I should also say it's not necessarily a big country game. Uh, there's Russia, there's Brazil, for instance. Uh, they have uh, great technologies and well, great people, but they're not yet global innovators by themselves. Uh, you can be a small country, and make a huge impact in terms of global innovation as well. So they need to be much smarter in using the few resources they have and really manage the flow of resources, the flow of people, the flow of capital, uh, the flow of ideas in order to leverage uh, the little that they actually uh, have. Um, you know, we, we can take a look at Singapore, which has pretty much become the uh, epicenter of uh, smart minds in Southeast uh, Asia Pacific. And they've been doing so for very successfully for the last 40 or 50 years. Uh, to some extent also a, a lot of inflow from British uh, scientists, uh, British entrepreneurs and, and from other countries. Um, Switzerland is another example. They have uh, been able to leverage very successfully initially technology imports from, uh, from outside from Europe in the 19th and early 20th century. And then they have benefited from the fact that other countries were letting go of their smart people. And many of these smart people went to Switzerland first 
before leaving for other countries. Uh, you do not need to possess people, you do not need to possess ideas in order to be able to innovate globally, but you need to be able to provide the right framework conditions for people to uh, become entrepreneurs and to leverage their ideas and exploit their ideas in order to, to create, uh, um, create innovations. You don't have to have a super large country in order to make this happen. Many entrepreneurs have become very, very rich even in small countries. Lithuania should not try to create another Silicon Valley. The effect of Silicon Valley to some extent is overrated. I mean, it's good that we have Silicon Valley and it's unique. Even in the United States, uh, Silicon Valley could not be recreated. Um, I think Lithuania would be better advised to make sure that its individual unique skills and capabilities that it does have can be leveraged best. Um, this could be done by means of using a bandwagon effect, for instance. A bandwagon effect uh, could be created by having uh, just a small group of scientists who come here and start creating a new technology, a new scientific discipline, which eventually will lead to a, a much larger group of uh, students having adopted this technology, creating startup companies. A few of those perhaps become large successful companies and create multinational firms. And if you have a few of these nuclei of innovations taking place in Lithuania, I'm sure nobody's going to overlook Lithuania in the future as a source of global innovation. Now with the collapse of the uh, Soviet Empire, uh, Lithuania is a bit of a, of, uh, in, in a unique location um, to transfer and convey a, uh, a, as a gate between the East and the West, between Europe and Far Eastern Europe, Russia, and maybe even Central Asia. I think these are great opportunities for Lithuania. Because Lithuanians are able to understand both the, the West and the East.